I'm Lynn Packer with report number 20 in a series, The Story of Operation Underground Railroad's Creation Myth. Tim Ballard, while he was a Homeland Security investigator, claims he was given a necklace by a five-year-old sex abuse victim. The gift became part of OUR Genesis lore and led to its mission to rescue child sex slaves around the world. Ballard's creation myth takes on epic proportions in the yet-to-be-released, purportedly true motion picture Sound of Freedom. The film transforms Ballard into an action hero on the level of Liam Neeson in Taken and Sylvester Stallone in Rambo Last Blood. In Sound of Freedom, after being given the necklace, Ballard embarks on a dangerous mission, much like the movies Taken and Last Blood, to find and rescue a kidnapped sex slave. This warning, later I'll issue a spoiler alert before I disclose how the movie ends. Also, later in this report, Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes reemerges to promote that motion picture, Sound of Freedom, Spanish version in Mexico. Plus, I'll reveal OUR's California connection, how Ballard, his two criminal defense attorneys, and the Batman character in The Sound of Freedom were all connected before OUR was founded. Political commentator Glenn Beck helped fabricate OUR's origin myth. It was in November 2013, a month before OUR officially existed. He explained how an undercover federal agent opened his eyes to the horrors of child sex trafficking. Beck said, One harrowing example involved a five-year-old boy and his ten-year-old sister who were smuggled across the U.S.-Mexico border each weekend. They were forced to attend drug cartel parties where they were horribly abused and used as sex toys. Fortunately, these children were saved. A miracle did happen because my friend was on to this ring. Three months later, in March 2014, Beck introduced Tim Ballard's necklace story to his worldwide online viewing audience. That necklace tale was a key part of the impetus behind the formation of Operation Underground Railroad. The clip you're about to see is part of a plea for more donations after Beck had already contributed more than a million dollars to the Utah-based raid and rescue nonprofit. Not long ago, a horrific video of a five-year-old boy being sexually abused in the worst way was discovered by U.S. authorities. The boy was five and his 12-year-old sister. They had been kidnapped and they had been trafficked back and forth between the U.S. and Mexico. Both were sex slaves to a monster of a man. Well, something happened. Divine Providence stepped in and it took place at the U.S.-Mexico border. The boy was seen by a U.S. official who knew who he was, identified the boy in the video, and the boy was rescued from the monster. That little boy jumped into the arms of my friend who tearfully held him, told him he was safe. The kid would not let go, fearful that he's going to fall back into the dark hands of that monster again. It took a while, but after he realized he was safe, he gave my friend a gift. It's a gift of a necklace. It's this necklace. It reads, Man of God, pursue godliness, faith, and love. That necklace meant everything to the child. It represented his only hope. It was given to him by his sister, his last prayer. His older sister gave it to him and said, wear it and pray that God will rescue us. Their united prayer was answered. And so the origin myth began. To be sure, in fact, there really was a child sex abuse monster involved. Also true, in Ballard's origin story, there was a five-year-old boy who was being victimized. And Tim Ballard was one of the Homeland Security agents on the case. But big questions about the rest of the story. Had the boy actually been kidnapped? Was he forced into commercial sex slavery? Or, as Ballard would say, being trafficked? Did he really give Ballard a necklace his abducted sister had given him? 
Ballard's necklace story is central to the still-not-yet-released movie Sound of Freedom. Here, actor Jim Caviezel plays Tim Ballard hugging the actor who plays the five-year-old victim. And in this shot, from the movie's preview, the boy hands Ballard a necklace and asks him to rescue his sister, who was kidnapped with him but sold into sex slavery in Colombia. Can you help me find my sister? The trailer caption reads. At the time of the necklace scene, Ballard was a special agent for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, Homeland Security Investigations, HSI. Any one of those acronyms applies. In 2006, he was working out of El Centro in southeastern California near the U.S.-Mexican border at Calexico. Just so you're oriented, let me set the stage. El Centro is 122 miles east of San Diego, which is north of the Tijuana border crossing across the U.S.-Mexico border. San Diego and El Centro are connected by the Interstate 8 Highway. The Calexico Crossing is south of El Centro in California's lower Imperial Valley. That's where Ballard encountered a serial sex abuser. On July 3, 2006, an American man accompanied by a five-year-old Hispanic boy in a van similar to this one entered the long, wide queue of vehicles leaving Mexico going into the United States. The man, Earl Buchanan from San Bernardino, had no identification for the boy, so he was directed to the secondary inspection area where border agents take a closer look. We got intel uh, an American man had was kidnapping children in Mexico smuggling them into the United States and in San Bernardino, you can look this, this case up, his name's Earl Buchanan. You can look it up, you can Google, learn all about the case. He had a compound up in San Bernardino where he was taking the kids and he was filming his sex no. acts with these kids. He was having sex with them yes. and filming and it. and filming it. And then what, selling it online or? Just keeping it for himself, sharing oh with gosh. people. And so this guy's coming across the border and, and um, we're on the scene and we get the kid out, this five-year-old boy. And I, it was the moment that he five ran. Five-year-old boy. Five-year-old oh boy. Gosh. And I recognized him from the video. No way. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen one of the kids from the video. And I'm like, I didn't know, my, my, I had a physiological reaction. Like, I didn't know if I could handle this. And then the kid kind of inherently knew we were the good guys, right? So he runs to us and jumps in, our, in my no arms. No way. And he's like, hold it. he's holding me and he's shaking. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, does he speak English? Does he speak Spanish? I, maybe both, I don't know. And he spoke perfect English, which was haunting to me because the only reason he did was because he had been with this guy, as it turned out, since oh. he, was a, he was taken as an infant. Oh, my gosh. And he said to me, like no five-year-old should ever have to say to anybody, anyone, he said, I don't belong here. For whatever reason, the necklace pendant in the movie is round and not shaped like a dog tag. In any event, as the origin tale goes, the boy gives it to Ballard. The thing that happened, and call this luck, providence, whatever, to, to me was special, is the little boy had a necklace. That little boy, the five-year-old. And he, his sister had given him the necklace when they were separated by oh, Buchanan. Yeah. Okay? And it was a little dog tag. And, I, and he gave it to me. You know, he knew I, mm. I had to go find his sister now. Oh, no. Yeah, and we did. We got her. We got her out. Oh, my God. But he gave me the necklace. And, and I tried to give it back. He's like, no, it's yours, it's yours. This is when he was hugging me. And I'm like, okay. I put it in my pocket, didn't think much of it. But later, one of my children found it and said, would you get this? I'm like, uh, how, do I, how do I tell this story to my kid? And I tell my kid what I can. And he says, isn't it cool that that little kid put your name in the necklace, Dad? I said, what are you talking about? My name's not in the necklace. I'm like, yeah, yeah, your name's right here. And I, sure enough, I flip it around. And that little necklace had a scripture from the Bible on it from the book of 1 Timothy. Oh, my goodness. So that was like, to me, I was already feeling like, what am I going to do? Am I going to quit? Am I going to go full in? That necklace, it was, like I, it, was like, it was like that little boy, whether he knew it or not, just gave me a commission. And, th and that necklace, I wore that for every operation I did from that point on. And it was kind of like my symbol, like, I'm oh, in wow. now. 
The necklace is not only connected to the search for the five-year-old boy's sister, but also to a search beginning seven years later for a three-year-old boy possibly kidnapped in Haiti. In 2009, three-year-old Gardy Marty vanished while attending a Mormon church service in Haiti, where his father, Gesno, was bishop. Here are excerpts from an OUR video about Ballard's failed attempt to find and rescue Gardy four years after he disappeared. He was three when they took him. When that first happened, I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't even get into my house and sleep because as a father, my job is, you know, getting my son back. I remember reading the story and I, there was a picture of Gesno and my heart just melted for him. As a father, I have enough experience to know very little is being done to find this little boy. And I said, I am in. Now what do I do? Both times I made this promise and the US government said you can't do it, it's outside of our jurisdiction. And it was my wife who always has the easy answer and she says, well, you've made these commitments, you basically, you have to quit your job. We got to Haiti and, and we worked with law enforcement and we went into this place, this dark place to find Gardy. It looked like an orphanage, but what it was was a trafficker trap. We found the kidnappers. We cracked the case. There's 28 children that were rescued, but his son was not there. Even though Gardy was not at what Ballard claims was not really an orphanage, but a child trafficking center, he did extract 28 potential sex slaves. One boy in particular jumped into Ballard's arms and then sat on his lap during what Ballard calls the boy's ride to freedom. Uh, the little boy, this three-year-old little boy who you see in the, in the picture, he jumped into my arms. And as I held him, he almost immediately saw this shiny thing on my neck. It was the necklace. Now this, this is the necklace that is so symbolic to our organization. It was a necklace that was given to me by one of the first children uh, about 10 years ago that, that I had pulled out of a trafficking ring. And he gave me that necklace, that little boy. And so here I am holding this, this, this really this, this slave, this little child who's for sale. And he sees this necklace and it, it, it even says on it, it's a replica of the original that I had on my neck. Um, he see, and it says Operation Underground Railroad. And he pulls it off my neck and he puts it around his neck. And you know, here I am trying to be this, this kind of tough trafficker and I'm biting my lip so I don't start crying. OUR commemorates that boy's ride to freedom with a dog tag it sells online. The website says, only three years old, a manual could have been sold to traffickers and forced into the illegal sex trade. A manual jumped into my lap it was his ride to freedom, and he was no longer a slave. OUR also sells a special edition version, this one timed to the release of the Sound of Freedom trailer. OUR's website says, Introducing a special edition Sound of Freedom dog tag, inspired by the upcoming feature film Sound of Freedom, which chronicles Tim Ballard's true life story and the events that inspired him to found OUR. The tungsten carbide Sound of Freedom dog tags were inspired by true events depicted in the film. Ballard was given a dog tag necklace which was inscribed with scripture after rescuing a five-year-old boy from sex slavery. The boy's older sister had given the necklace to him when they were both in captivity as a sign of hope that they would one day be free. Ballard's friend, Tony Robbins, and his wife, Sage, helped promote the necklaces and the movie. And so if you open it up, it's just really beautiful. I asked to just kind of show you. It's got yes, a lot of grenades. Yes, these beautiful dog tags. And it also, on the back of it, says Sound of Freedom. And Sound of Freedom is the most uh, just 
gorgeous film, uh, actually a, a true life story of Tim Ballard about this cause. And when you get a chance, see the film. It's, it's called The Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. It'll move you deeply. Blessings to you all. God bless. Thank you. Thank you for being a force for good. The boy handing Ballard his sister's necklace is woven into the film's plot. Part of the movie's trivia lore was Ballard asking the film's producers to leave out the necklace segment. Tim Ballard actually asked the producers to not include the scene where he gets the necklace from the young boy because he thought nobody would believe it, even though it really happened. Back to the Buchanan arrest in 2006. The upcoming Sound of Freedom movie does not focus on OUR's failed attempts to find Gardy, but on freeing the five-year-old boy at the Calexico border and the arrest of his abuser, Earl Buchanan. In 2019, Ballard met with then-President Donald Trump in support of Trump's border wall. He wrote about it in a guest editorial in the Deseret News. Ballard offered his rescue of the five-year-old boy at the Calexico crossing as proof the existing wall in that section was working. There is a significant border wall between Mexicali, Mexico, where he took the child, and Calexico, California. Buchanan was compelled to take his chances at the Calexico port of entry, which is armed with high-tech monitoring equipment and well-trained officers who look into the eyes of every person seeking entry, which eventually led to Buchanan's arrest. Of course, that's the beginning of The Sound of Freedom's main storyline. Canadian actor Gary Basaraba portrays Earl Buchanan, who was arrested at the border on July 3rd, 2006. The story about that arrest and events that followed involving the boy and his sister is ostensibly true. As the movie poster says, the boy and girl had been sold into slavery, and when their country looked away, only one could save them. Not just the film's poster, which says it is based on the powerful true story, but others speak to accuracy. The film chronicles the true story of Tim Ballard. This movie is a true life story of Tim Ballard. Highlights the true story of Tim Ballard. This is the true story of real-life superhero Tim Ballard, an absolutely brilliant film which tells the true story of one of Tim Ballard's most heroic and adventurous rescue missions. Fact-checking truthfulness to see if Ballard deserves any Pinocchios requires getting into a lot of detail, especially how the movie ends. Which brings me to the spoiler alert I talked about earlier. If you're waiting to see the movie, whether in theaters, if it ever gets there, or via streaming, and don't want the ending spoiled, you should quit watching this video. A hint as to the primary theme is provided by the trailer. Rocio, age 11, is sold into sex slavery. We're talking about extracting an 11-year-old little girl from an army of rebels, says Caviezel's voice in the trailer. If you watch my previous report, you'll recall Dennis Rice, who once owned the Sound of Freedom distribution rights for North America. Late last year, Rice appeared at a right-wing extremist patriot conference in Las Vegas, a group that tried to raise money to fund the movie's distribution to theaters. Rice was introduced by conspiracy theorist Juan O'Savin. During his talk, Rice succinctly summarized the movie's plot line in a few sentences. When I saw the movie, which is a true story about a real patriot named Tim Ballard, former CIA agent turned Homeland Security agent in charge of Border Patrol, rescues an eight-year-old boy from Honduras coming over the Mexican border into America, only to find out that his 11-year-old sister has been sold to a drug cartel lord pedophile in Colombia. But because he's Homeland Security, he can't go down there. So he quits his job, 
He asks his wife if he can mortgage the house and takes the $40,000 that he got and goes down to Columbia and saves this little girl. Recapping, a Honduras boy and his sister are kidnapped. The boy is smuggled into the U.S. across the Mexican border and forced into commercial sex slavery by pedophile Earl Buchanan. His sister is sold to a pedophile Colombian drug lord who keeps her as his personal sex slave. Ballard rescues the boy in the United States from Buchanan's clutches. Because the government Ballard works for will not act, he mortgages his house and sets out to rescue the boy's sister. Rice gave away most of the plot, but fell short of disclosing the ending. So I ask an OUR supporter, who was at a private showing in Las Vegas last year, to lay out the storyline. Jared J. Brown, a Washington, D.C. consultant and former Orrin Hatch legislative assistant, liked the film, calling it one of the best films I've ever seen. It's a mind-blowing story. It feels like the very best Rambo movie. It's like Taken. It's a true story. Tim Ballard is a living hero, maybe a superhero. Brown met Jim Caviezel at the screening. Along with his friend from St. George, he described talking to Caviezel as an intensely spiritual experience. He is very obviously a man of God. Brown describes the plot. An 11-year-old girl and her brother are lured outside their home on the pretext a talent agency is filming them for job applications. It's a sham audition. The siblings are kidnapped, separated, and farmed out. They vanish. Ballard first saved the boy at the border while still a U.S. Homeland Security agent. The boy gave Ballard the necklace. Ballard promises to rescue his sister. Ballard's government agency will not authorize him to rescue her, so he quit, founded OUR, and put together an armed strike force. As the team searched for the missing girl, they rescue other child sex slaves along the way. So far, so good. The storyline is similar to stories Ballard has been telling publicly since 2013. At that point, the movie breaks new ground, going where Ballard had not gone publicly before, to the place the trailer hints at. After gathering intelligence and being inspired by God, Ballard learns the girl is being held deep in the jungle, where a guerrilla army is hiding. She becomes the pedophile guerrilla leader's personal sex slave. Ballard determines he must go in alone, without his team, and even without his own firearm. This shot is from the movie's preview. He takes on the persona of a doctor who is working to stop the spread of a deadly, highly contagious disease. When most of the rebel fighters are drunk, Ballard confronts the drug lord, and kills him. Ballard either killed the bad guy with a knife or bashed his head in. Brown cannot remember which. Ballard flees with the girl and is taken to safety after meeting his team at a rendezvous point. It was a Rambo-like rescue. In the film Last Blood, John Rambo, according to one critic, is presented as a deadly white savior who's there to rescue his Latina surrogate daughter who was sold to a Mexican drug cartel as a sex slave. Brown believes the story is probably do many OUR believers who have been to pre-release screenings. I ask, do you think this really happened? He answered, it's all a true story. I ask, are you quite certain? It's like a story that is made up, but it's true. Question. Ballard has never told the girl extraction from rebel story before. Why? Sometimes if you have a good story, you save it for the right time, for a movie. The truth is, Ballard duped Brown. The storyline is false from beginning to end. 
Ballard story that culminates with the dramatic rescue of the boy's sister in Columbia depends on there having been a kidnapping in the first place, of the boy and the girl. The story does not work if one or both live at home in the United States, does not work if one or both are groomed for sex abuse, not abducted. You might recall Ballard invited his listeners to go online and check the validity of his Earl Buchanan story. We got intel uh, uh, an American man had ki was kidnapping children in Mexico, smuggling them into the United States. And in San Bernardino, you can look this, this case up. His name's Earl Buchanan. You can look it up. You can Google learn all about the case. So I did. The true story has been hiding in plain sight. Police reports and court records document that an Earl Buchanan, accompanied by a five-year-old boy, was stopped at the border on July 3, 2006. They confirm part of the story is true. Buchanan was stopped at the border. A Border Patrol agent did find a video camera and cassettes in the back of Buchanan's van. The officer played one of the tapes, which showed very graphically Buchanan performing sex acts on the boy who was with him. Ballard was one of two HSI agents called to the scene to further investigate. When I worked in radio, Paul Harvey's news aired during my shift. He often included an in-depth feature which concluded with a twist, beginning with the words, and now the rest of the story. I'll begin the next section of this report, and now the rest of the story. Or, in the movie's case, now the actual rest of the story. The five-year-old boy was not kidnapped. He had been groomed probably several years earlier. Big difference. He was a U.S. citizen living near San Bernardino, where he was befriended by Buchanan. His name is Jose M., not Pedro, as Glenn Beck calls him. The records show his last name, but I'll leave that out. He'd been living with his grandmother, who either consented to or was oblivious to his being sexually assaulted, perhaps for years. The premise of Ballard's story falls apart at the outset. Ballard's movie altered the facts so they would conform to OUR's mission statement. OUR's mission is not to and never has been to rescue groomed sex abuse victims. About the border stop, Ballard's fiction is that the Customs and Border Protection agent told me, look, I don't know why I put him in secondary. There was no reason. There was nothing obvious. Ballard infers Providence played a hand in saving the boy. The fact is Buchanan was sent there because he had no ID for the boy. That's in police reports. Another Ballard fiction, I'm the first guy there. He was so scared that he was going back into the evil grasps of this man, Earl Buchanan. The fact is, a customs agent, not Ballard, was the first to take the boy from the van to a room at secondary. There was no report of the boy being afraid of Buchanan. Then there's Ballard's false statement to Trump. Buchanan was compelled to take his chances at the Calexico port of entry, which is armed with high-tech monitoring equipment and well-trained officers who look into the eyes of every person seeking entry. The truth is, Buchanan was not trying to smuggle the boy into the United States. He did not first try going around the wall. He did not hide the boy in his van. Fact is, Buchanan was not caught with high-tech equipment or a border agent looking him in the eye. He was caught because he forgot the boy's ID, which he left back in San Bernardino. It was not the first time Buchanan had taken the boy to Mexico and back. Those are facts laid out in police reports and court documents. Then there's the sister. It is true the boy had an older sister. Her name is Yanelli. She was 14 at the time not Rocio, 11. She was never kidnapped. There's no record of her even being one of Buchanan's sex abuse victims. On the day Buchanan was arrested, she was with her grandmother at their home near San Bernardino, not a sex slave in Colombia. 
Other than Ballard's word, there is no corroboration for his story that Yanelli gave her brother a necklace. Yanelli M.'s role is well documented in police reports and court records. Much of the investigation shifted from federal homeland security to state law enforcement in San Bernardino, where there was already an open case on Buchanan. It was a botched case up until then. Bottom line, no Rambo-like extraction or anything close ever happened. Buchanan's arrest was widely covered by the California press and a national wire service. An example, this Los Angeles Times story. A man suspected of molesting children of his low-income tenants came to the attention of authorities years before he was arrested on child pornography charges last week, officials and neighbors said Wednesday. After finding incriminating evidence in Buchanan's van at the Calexico border crossing, agents obtained a warrant and the very next day searched Buchanan's property 160 miles to the north on the outskirts of San Bernardino, east of Los Angeles. All the while, Buchanan sat in jail in El Centro. Law officers searched this construction company compound, the site of Buchanan's construction business, it was packed with equipment at the time. A warehouse on the property had a bedroom and an adjoining children's playroom stocked with video games and children's movies. The room was wired for video recording. Investigators soon determined it was the site where Buchanan had molested between 8 and 11 children ages 2 to 15. The search netted more news coverage. Trips to Disneyland, movies, gifts of dirt bikes, clothes and video games, everything the children could want plus a place to stay for their impoverished parents. Investigators say these were the tools a landlord used to win the trust of parents and lure their children to his residence. But was it a search or a raid? Both Glenn Beck and Tim Ballard mischaracterized the search as a raid even falsely claiming that's where Buchanan was arrested. Tim first met Pedro on video evidence and then again in real life on the day when his team raided the residence of the California man who stole him. Pedro noticed Tim in the midst of the raid as the trafficker lay on his face at gunpoint. The six-year-old boy ran to Tim, put his arms around him and simply said, I don't belong here. Besides Beck's false account, OUR published its own erroneous version. The article ran with this photo from the movie. The article said, Ballard had been toiling over a case of a wealthy contractor who was suspected to have kidnapped children from Mexico and smuggled them to the United States. That's not true. Ballard was not involved with the case prior to the arrest. He gets a Pinocchio. This was one of the toughest cases Tim had ever worked. Well, it was not Ballard's case, and it was not tough. Buchanan was caught with smoking gun evidence at the border. Another Pinocchio. A primary lead in the case was a little boy who had been smuggled out of Mexico by the pedophile at age five. You already know the boy was never smuggled out of Mexico. OUR's article goes on. Based on evidence from video footage, Tim believed the boy was enslaved in this house with several other children. The boy and other victims were not enslaved, not held by force at the house. On July 4th, Tim and a team of other operatives raided the compound. Again, false. It was a search. The operation rescued 11 children who were transported from the home to a safe location where Tim recognized the little boy he knew from the evidence tapes. Uh, that's also a lie. Buchanan was not arrested during any raid on his home near San Bernardino, certainly not at gunpoint. He was arrested the day prior at the border after incriminating evidence was found. No victims were enslaved there, but many were groomed, lured there, and sexually abused there. No victims were found during the search. 
There was no dramatic rescue with a jump team knocking down doors and freeing sex slaves. Buchanan pled guilty in the federal case involving Jose. He was later convicted by a jury in state court for abusing several more. He served the prison terms concurrently and was released from prison late last year. Now 78, he's on the sex offender list. Paul Hutchinson was an early investor in the film. He helped fund writing the script. He was on several OUR jumps and is portrayed in the film by Eduardo Verastegui, and he was in Colombia for part of the film production. Hutchinson says the boy giving Ballard dog tags and asking him to find his sister, that was theatrical liberty from the writers. The movie has five or six rescues brought together. Some, Tim, did not do. Other operatives did them, but they were put into one, that is, Tim's character. There was a rescue attempt in Haiti that involved going into the jungle there, not Colombia. As Hutchinson says, there was an attempted jungle rescue in Haiti, not Colombia. It involved a search for the missing three-year-old Gardy Marty, who went missing from that church service. Ballard and his group posed as doctors on a medical mission similar to what the movie portrays. Uh, we were in one of the most dangerous regions in the world for trafficking. We were undercover uh, pretending to be doctors doing a, uh, a medical clinic. That was the only way we could get into this particular region to find the kids who were being trafficked. Here's a comparison between movie fiction and reality. The one took place in Colombia, the actual one in Haiti. Both involve purported child sex slave abductions. The fictional character is 11-year-old Rocio. Three-year-old Gardy Marty was a real person. Both were jungle rescue attempts. In both cases, they posed as doctors and a medical team. The rescue succeeds in the movie version in a real fairy tale ending. In reality, the rescue was a complete failure. Michael Harvey, who is still in government service, was Ballard's partner that day at the border. Seen here with Ballard more recently. Harvey knows there's a movie and could verify part or all of Ballard's story. He declined my request for an interview. Here's another fact about the case that could have made a good episode for the newspaper feature or television series, Ripley's Believe It or Not. So, believe it or not, the assistant U.S. attorney who prosecuted Earl Buchanan and knows Ballard is lying about the case is now an OUR employee. Alessandra Serrano, as you can tell from court documents, pursued criminal charges against Earl Buchanan. She was hired by OUR as an attorney and is also defending Tim Ballard against possible criminal charges. Serrano knows Buchanan groomed the five-year-old boy and did not kidnap him from Mexico or Honduras. She knows the boy was a U.S. citizen, not a foreign national. That the boy's sister is Yanelli, 14, not Rocio, 11, who was never kidnapped, but was living with her grandmother and her brother. That there was no raid on Buchanan's compound. And she knows Ballard never went into a jungle and rescued anyone from a Colombian rebel leader, child sex abuser. Serrano is just one of Tim Ballard's San Diego connections that he had before founding OUR. His two criminal defense attorneys, James Lendris and Serrano, and Batman, Steve Cass, were all connected via the U.S. Attorney's Office in San Diego. All three of them would know the Sound of Freedom storyline is fiction. My previous report was about failed attempts by an extremist patriot group to raise money to get the Sound of Freedom distributed in U.S. theaters. The next section of this report is about how the movie's producer is marketing the Spanish version in Mexico.
For the past few months, producer Eduardo Verastegui has been touring the 32 Mexican states, showing the Sound of Freedom, Spanish version, and signing on government officials to his anti-child sex trafficking campaign. Promotional material says the movement's awareness tool is the film produced by Verastegui, Sound of Freedom, starring Jim Caviezel, that tells the true story of Tim Ballard. Like Ballard, Verastegui has set up a nonprofit organization that solicits donations. Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes, who lowered his OUR support profile two years ago when the criminal investigation began, has reemerged in Mexico to help promote the movie and Verastegui's anti child sex trafficking campaign. Promotional material says, the 2022 anti-trafficking tour has the participation of U.S. Attorneys General. Reyes campaign spokesman Alan Crooks also popped up on the tour. The campaign website says Crooks was a representative of the National Association of Attorneys General of the United States of America. But Crooks told me he has no knowledge of any U.S. Attorney General's Association endorsement of Rastegui's crusade. Crooks also disclosed that the Reyes political campaign paid for his trip and Reyes's. While on his Mexico tour, Rastegui seems to be following a Tim Ballard playbook to include making unproven, sometimes outlandish claims like Mexico is the sexual paradise of American pedophiles. 57 children disappear every day in Mexico, the majority for child sex trafficking, that is, 21,000 a year. Mexico leads the trafficking of children for sexual exploitation worldwide, and the United States is the world's number one consumer of sex with children, and Mexico is their number one supplier. Mexico is the country with 60% of the production of child pornography on the planet. These little ones are sexually abused 15 times a day, destined for the production of child pornography and then discarded for the illegal trafficking of human organs. The United States is next on Verastegui's tour. His website says, he will visit all the states of the Mexican Republic, and each one will sign an agreement with the United States, then continue with the United States. In fact, he's already connected with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in June, and he said, soon we will be back in Florida, presenting the film Sound of Freedom before the governor, his team, and state legislators. Verastegui also hints that he and his production company have possibly given up on trying to get the movie into theaters. He now says the movie will be released in September, but on various platforms, which indicates a streaming release. I'll conclude this report with a postscript. The Salt Lake Tribune finally acknowledges an OUR criminal investigation. It was in a July 17th story about the groundbreaking of a Hurricane Utah site for a replica colonial village that would promote an extremist right-wing view of American history. The headline read, Hurricane's Colonial Village Project, backed by Glenn Beck and Dinesh D'Souza, falls short on history. Dignitaries from Hurricane and United We Pledge joined conservative media personality Glenn Beck and others on July 2nd to break ground for the village. The groundbreaking began a campaign to raise about $50 million, led by St. George-based nonprofit United We Pledge. Glenn Beck spoke at the event. The Trib article reported that Tim Ballard is helping United We Pledge develop a patriotic history curriculum. Seven years ago, and again last year, I reported on Ballard and Beck's fascination with corrupted, revisionist American and Mormon church histories. But the part of the July 17 Salt Lake Tribune article that stands out 
even though it was downplayed, was this. In 2020, Davis County Attorney Troy Rawlings said he was investigating OUR for possible fundraising irregularities. A year ago, Vice News reported the FBI was also involved in the investigation. Contacted last week by the Tribune, Rawlings and the FBI refused to confirm or deny that the probe is still going on. The article does acknowledge previous reporting by national news outlets, The Atlantic and Vice News, that reported the investigation more than a year ago. It failed to mention that I broke the investigation story almost two years ago, in the first of what's now been 20 in-depth reports. The Tribune fails to mention that its reporters knew about the investigation more than a year ago, but sat on the story. It fails to atone for the fact the Tribune, for the past several years, has published one positive story after another about Tim Ballard and Operation Underground Railroad without any fact-checking whatsoever. The Trib has given Tim Ballard and OUR what amounts to free advertising, disguised as news coverage, aiding the organization's collections of tens of millions of dollars in donations every year. For the Tribune and other Utah mainstream news outlets, Ballard's too-good-to-be-true story about his God-inspired group of ex-Navy SEALs and Green Berets going to the darkest corners of the world rescuing child sex slaves is way too good a story to debunk. As I said, it's not just the Tribune, it's also the rest of Utah's main news outlets. The quest for ratings and subscribers, perhaps combined with the loss of experienced reporters, resulted in Ballard achieving sacred cow status, whose image that he created with false and unproven claims and peddled to the press should not be tarnished with the facts. Here are a few examples of the TRIB's OUR coverage. Operation Underground Railroad celebrates three years of international child trafficking rescue missions. A.G. Reyes, Utah group, played part in Colombian sex trafficking sting. Hatch and Ballard, we are working to end the modern-day slave trade. Utah-based anti-sex trafficking group releases documentary. A way-too-early look at the 2022 U.S. Senate race in Utah. Wrapping up this report on the facts behind OUR's origin and how it's portrayed in the movie Sound of Freedom, here's my commentary on the film's storyline that begins with a kidnapping that never happened and ends with a dramatic rescue that existed only in Tim Ballard's mind. In March 2015, I reported in depth on OUR's original concept to form a three-man armed jump team to rescue children forced into the commercial sex trade while capturing the raids on film to make a motion picture or television series. A pilot was cobbled together to pitch the concept. It showed the three-man team with weapons undergoing training for the raids. Even then, I compared the original concept to Rambo movies. Reality quickly set in. Not even third world countries permitted Ballard to insert SWAT-like teams to raid brothels, bars, and sting parties in search of underage sex workers to liberate. Instead, on camera, all his team could do was to play pedophile sex tourists while local law enforcement rescued purported child sex slaves. The Sound of Freedom depicts a world, a dream world, that Tim Ballard wanted to inhabit in real life. But those hopes were dashed at the outset. Now, a decade later, at least on the big screen, Ballard becomes the hero he wanted to be. The Sound of Freedom portrays what Ballard wanted OUR to be when he conceived it. A heavily armed team rescuing child sex slaves from bad guys all caught on camera for a movie. 
he could not make it happen in reality, so he made it happen in fiction. That's delusional. That's the end. Thanks for watching.